take your Bibles, if you would, and turn with me to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to begin reading in verse 1 of Revelation chapter 3. We're now looking at the church of Sardis. The, uh, we've looked at we looked at the church of Ephesus. We looked at the church of uh, Smyrna, Pergamus, I believe. Let's we'll see what I was going to Yes, Smyrna, Pergamus, Thyatira, <coughs> and I believe we're at Sardis. We have a couple more after this. But we're going to begin reading in verse 1 of Revelation chapter 3. We're going to read down through verse 6. <coughs> Let's begin reading in verse 1. And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, seven stars, I, and seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou, ha thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou uh, shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even as Sardis, which have not defiled by their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath, the, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. So Father, I thank you for this day you've given me. Thank you. For the opportunity we have, Lord, to look at this passage regarding the church in Sardis, I pray you just be with us now and help us as we consider it. I pray you just help us to understand the truths that are here. I pray you bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There seems to be an obsession nowadays with zombies. You know, video games, every video game, every, you know, Call of Duty and all these other video games, every one of them has a zombies one where you can, you know, fight the zombies. There's a whole bunch of movies regarding zombies. You have, you know, World War Z and you've got all these other movies that come out with zombies are part of the movie. See, the problem with zombies is that they're dead, that they don't know they're dead. And that's the problem. Well, the church of Sardis, you could probably pretty easily call them a zombie church. Because they were dead. But they didn't know they were dead. And because of that, the Apostle John writes to them and challenges them. The city of Sardis was located, it was situated on a natural acropolis rising 1,500 feet from the valley floor below it. It was considered nearly impregnable. It had been something that had been uh, easily defended numerous times, but interestingly enough, had fell, had fallen several times. It was located in, in Western Asia Minor, about 50 miles east of Smyrna, about 30 mile, miles southeast of Thyatira. It was an important and wealthy city. It was located on a commercial trade route running east and west through the, city, the country of Libya. It was an ancient city with a long history. Sardis had come back into prominence under the Roman rule. At one time, it was actually the capital of the kingdom of Lydia. Much of its wealth came from the textile industry. Uh, they would they raised sheep there. They would dye the wool. They would make clothing from it. So the manufacturing and dyeing and of, of these textiles thing was what made this a quite uh, port place. Plus, there was a lot, there was jewel trade there, and a lot of gold. It had been a very wealthy place. Most of the city practiced pagan worship. There were many mysterious cults or secret religions that were practiced, that were there. They said that they, one of the ones they worshipped, they worshipped the mother goddess Sybil. Their worship was probably the most debased and debauched of any of the ancient religions. In the later centuries, this city was ravaged by war and earthquakes. 
They say that the city in, of the Church of Sardis may well have been started by John. Because there are, fa in fact, they've found records, stone things, in which the Apostle John's name appears in some of the church ruins. So it very well could have been the Apostle John himself who started this church, who in fact was writing to them later. One of the stories that I wanted to just relay to you, um, the Greek historian Herodotus records that Croesus, who was the king of this area, at one point approached the oracle of Delphi to find out regarding what kind of action he should take against Cyrus, who was Cyrus, the Persians, who were bringing the Persians there against him to come fight. He didn't know what to do, so he went to the oracle of Delphi. Well, if you know anything about the oracle of Delphi and anything that was ever said, it was always very tricky. It was always very uh, nebulous and often the exact opposite of what they thought it meant. Well, when they approached the oracle council that Croesus would destroy a great empire if he crossed the Halix River into the Persian territory, thinking that the destruction of Cyrus's empire was prophesied, Croesus attacked. After an inconclusive battle, he retreated back to the city of Sardis and uh, Cyrus followed him and launched a surprise attack. This fortress, <clears throat> the city was a fortress. And <clears throat> it's set up on a hill 1,500 feet above the valley. While Cyrus's men sat in the valley and Croesus's men were in the fortress, they just kind of sat and watched. And somebody made a very big mistake. While leaning out over the wall, one of the soldiers dropped his helmet. Can't lose your helmet, you'll get in all kinds of trouble. So Cyrus's army watched as this man came out of the fortress and weaved his way down 